Chris and I are both musicians. I studied classical music in North Texas, and Chris was an opera singer, correct? Yeah. And so we have a strong background in music and strong opinions about music. I don't know how much different this original music is from the original Japanese music from the first time, because I never really got to hear that, because I was always the music we made here. But from what I'm hearing so far, I absolutely love it. It's uh, in many places a full orchestral score with real light motif and really real musical themes that really engage you in what's going on. And then in some scenes, it'll go to like to like a totally different genre of music, like when you show up at uh, at Bulma's uh, at uh, Doctor Brief's house, and it's like this tiki. You know, oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really it'll switch genres in some places. It's very appropriate music for the scenes. It has weight to the scenes that have real gravity, um, and it fits in with the dialogue really well. And that's extremely important because the dialogue can be can be very serious at times. You know, there's goofing around, but it can be very heavy. Someone's dying or someone's getting killed or whatever. And I'm sure Chris has a lot more to add to this as well. Or, if, or if, for instance, if you're seven years old and you're not supposed to understand death, they're falling asleep or <laughs> or going to another place. Um, <laughs> it's what the, what the the score, true, like what the true story uh, with the music is, is, that we don't have to, we don't have to make a decision as to whether to use it or not. Like it was never, it was never, uh, it was never hardly on the table as to whether we were going to to use the original music or not. We just wanted to use it. Yeah. Like they, we don't have to even, we don't have to guess as to whether the Japanese wanted to be a certain way. And uh, now it's just there. And I, I kind of. Kind of speaking in circles here, but what's cool about the music now is that there are moments of silence. Um, oh yeah, where the show can the actors really get to carry the show instead of the music trying to force people into feeling a certain way about a scene. Well, then when the what's really cool is like you'll have the actors acting and you know they're doing their emoting and it's really great and it's quiet and then when that orchestra creeps in, all of a sudden. It's this. It's just like being in a, in a, a mo major motion picture when it creeps in and, and just supports that and just adds weight to what has either just happened in a scene, what's happening in the scene, or even foreshadowing. And so, on many levels, it adds so much depth and it gives your ears a rest from constant sound, so that when it comes in, you really want it. You want to hear it. It's like you know, not eating a candy bar for a long time, and then if all of a sudden you have one, it's really, really good again, <laughs> as opposed to just being your senses being bombarded with sound and doinks and whistles and stuff. Um, and, it, and it just it makes it a real, it makes it a fun cartoon, an epic cartoon, and a deep cartoon all at once from different scenes. And it just, I don't know, I can't say enough good things about Dragon Ball Z Kai. I'm so excited about it and so thrilled about it. Um, I, I want to tell everybody about it, and I'm just, I just think it's going to be the definitive Dragon Ball Z because you're really going to get that pure manga story um, without the extra fluff, which can, is enjoyable. I mean, I like the extra fluff too, but if you say, hey, what's Dragon Ball Z about? Watch Dragon Ball Z Kai or read the manga, you know. If you want to watch original Dragon Ball Z, you get a bunch of extra stuff. It's cool. It's fun. There's a lot of posturing, a lot of fighting, a lot of yelling and, and screaming Mark heads off. Um, but, you know, this is this is cooler. It's You know what's interesting me. is that this is the first time that we're truly getting to get excited about Dragon Ball Z in the same way that people who knew of Dragon Ball Z before we worked on it right. were excited to find out that it was coming to America. Yeah, like, yeah. There's so many people who are so excited and so in my face about it, and I didn't really... I mean, honestly, I really didn't know as much about it when we first started working on it, and now uh, I'm like a I'm like a giddy fan. It is absolutely yeah. fun because nobody ever gets a chance. Uh, you were, we were talking about this. Yeah, like, like no one oh, yeah. ever gets a chance to do something. Again yeah, that's like that's this. we were talking about this off camera before we started, and I wanted to mention it on for the blog is that uh, Dragon Ball Z fans and animation fans in general, the ability to do this is unprecedented. I count the number of cartoons that have or anime or whatever you want to call it that have been. You know, edited it down like Toye did that, sent it to us, and then we get to redo it with the same cast fundamentally. And for me personally, as an artist, I like all the creative choices that all the people are making above me. Whereas before, I did not. And I can say, <laughs> I, I'm not saying it was a bad show before, but I personally, I mean, and artists disagree. So and there might be a lot of fans out there who liked those artistic choices before, and that's fine. I personally didn't. So publicly, I can finally say, I love what decisions Chris is making. I love the creative choices that Justin's making and all the producers are making and the writers are making. I'm thrilled about it because it adds so much more power to the show and makes it so true to what it was originally intended to be. And, that, and that's why Dragon Ball Z has been so hugely popular for what how many years now since since the 80s you know years. since when uh, Akira Toyama created it in the 80s and so I'm giddy about it you're right because and, and what I was telling Chris I was like I've seen so much Dragon Ball I've been around it so much that it's hard for me to get emotionally excited about it when I'm when I'm watching it again you know for the like, watch back video I'm like ah oh, yeah yeah but now when I'm hearing the new performances of the more seasoned actors and I'm hearing some cast changes and stuff and if it's giving me goosebumps and I've seen it a bunch I guarantee you it's going to give uh, fans, and especially people who haven't seen it, goosebumps.
Dragon Ball Z fans, hear me now, believe me later. Dragon Ball Z Kai will be the definitive Kai. It will be all time. You're going to love it better.